Welcome to the 2025 CDL General Knowledge Practice Test. This test has 60 questions to help you prepare for this test. Before we get started, don't forget to jumpstart that like button to keep this channel running. Now here is your CDL instructor to walk you through the questions. Question one, what is a recommended practice when driving down a lengthy downhill slope? A, use the braking effect of the engine. B, apply the brakes firmly. C, increase your speed gradually. D, engage cruise control. The correct answer is A, use the braking effect of the engine. When traveling down a long downgrade, it is advisable to use the braking effect of the engine by downshifting to lower gears. This technique helps control your speed without excessive reliance on the brakes, preventing brake overheating and maintaining better vehicle stability. Question two. What is a valid principle regarding backing a heavy vehicle? A. Backing should be avoided whenever you can. B. Backing should be attempted without assistance. C. Backing is always the quickest way to maneuver. D. Backing is most effective when done quickly. The correct answer is A. Backing should be avoided whenever you can. To minimize the risks associated with backing a heavy vehicle, it's advisable to avoid backing whenever possible, reducing the potential for accidents, collisions, and difficult maneuvers. Question three, what is the designated minimum tread depth requirement for the remaining tires on a vehicle? A, 1 16th inch, B, 2 32nd inch, C, 1 quarter inch, D, 1 8th inch. The correct answer is, B, 2 32nd inch. The minimum tread depth for all tires except the front tires should be 2 32nd inch. Adequate tread depth is essential for maintaining traction and handling, helping to prevent hydroplaning and improving overall road grip, which contributes to safer driving conditions. Question four, spare electrical fuses are considered to be part of the vehicle's blank. A, electrical fuses repair kit. B, electrical equipment. C. Emergency equipment. D. Extra mechanical supplies. The correct answer is C. Emergency equipment. Electrical fuses are required by DOT to be included in CDL's emergency equipment. At least one spare fuse is needed for each type of part and accessory that needs to be powered. Question 5. What is the consequence for a first-time offense of operating a commercial vehicle under the influence of drugs or alcohol? A. Six months. B. Two years. C. One year. D. Three months. The correct answer is C. One year. For a first offense of driving a commercial vehicle under the influence of drugs or alcohol, the driver will face a suspension of their commercial driver's license CDL for a period of one year. This emphasizes the seriousness of the offense and the importance of maintaining safe and sober driving practices. Question 6. A vehicle's air brake system should build air pressure back up from 85 to 100 psi within blank. A. 60 seconds. B. 2 minutes. C. 45 seconds. D. 30 seconds. The correct answer is C, 45 seconds. After air tanks have been applied during an air brake check, a driver needs to time how long it takes for pressure to build back up. For safety purposes, the driver needs to make sure the tanks fill up from 85 to 100 PSI in 45 seconds. Question seven. When balancing cargo weight, the primary objective is to maintain the load in A, A, forward biased position, B, rearward biased position, C. Centered position. D. Leftward bias position. The correct answer is C. Centered position. The crucial aspect of balancing cargo weight is to ensure that the load remains centered within the vehicle, promoting stability, proper weight distribution, and safe handling during transportation. Question 8. When conducting a pre-trip inspection and assessing your steering and exhaust systems, which statement is accurate? A. Exhaust system issues can be easily ignored. B. Steering wheel play of more than 10 degrees. 
two inches on a 20-inch steering wheel can make it hard to steer. C. The exhaust system has no bearing on vehicle operation. D. Steering wheel play has no impact on steering ease. The correct answer is B. Steering wheel play of more than 10 degrees, 2 inches on a 20-inch steering wheel, can make it hard to steer. During a pre-trip inspection, it's important to note that excessive steering wheel play, exceeding 10 degrees, can result in difficulty steering the vehicle effectively, affecting control and maneuverability. Question 9. On which type of vehicles should you avoid using stab braking? A. Vehicles with manual transmissions. B. Vehicles with large cargo loads. C. Vehicles with automatic transmissions. D. Vehicles equipped with anti-lock brakes. The correct answer is D. Vehicles equipped with anti-lock brakes. Stab braking should not be used on vehicles equipped with anti-lock brakes, ABS, as it can interfere with the proper functioning of the ABS system and may lead to reduced braking effectiveness. Question 10. Because double and triple trailers have more blank to pull, it increases chances of losing traction and skidding in adverse weather conditions. A. Dead axles. B. Ring hitches. C. Converter gears. D. Kingpins. The correct answer is A. Dead axles. Drivers of double and triple trailers have longer length and more dead axles to pull with their drive axles. Drivers must be especially careful during mountain driving and adverse weather that cause slippery conditions. Question 11. How can controlled braking be defined? A. Slamming on the brakes abruptly. B. Applying minimal pressure to the brakes. C. Completely releasing the brake pedal. D. Applying brake firmly, but not enough to lock up. The correct answer is D. Applying brake firmly, but not enough to lock up. Controlled braking involves applying the brakes with sufficient force to slow down the vehicle effectively while ensuring the wheels do not lock up. This technique helps maintain steering control and prevent skidding during braking. Question 12. A safe speed on a curve for a straight truck may be to blank when pulling double or triple trailers. A. Slow. B. Appropriate. C. Fast. D. Inconsistent. The correct answer is C. Fast. Double and triple trailers are less stable than other CDL vehicles, and drivers must take special care. Drivers need to steer gently and drive slowly around corners, on ramps, off ramps, and curves to prevent rolling over. Question 13. How would you define an escape ramp? A. A special lane for overtaking slower vehicles. B. A rest area with picnic tables and facilities. C. An exit at the bottom of a hill to slow you down and stop. D. A lane dedicated to emergency vehicles. The correct answer is C. An exit at the bottom of a hill to slow you down and stop. An escape ramp is a designated exit located at the bottom of a hill designed to provide a safe area for vehicles to slow down and come to a complete stop in case their brakes fail while descending the hill. This is an essential safety feature on steep grades to prevent accidents and mitigate the risks of brake failure. Question 14. Is it possible for federal inspectors to conduct an inspection of your truck or bus? A. No, only state inspectors are authorized. B. Yes, and can also place you out of service. C. Yes, and it's a routine procedure. D. No. Federal inspectors only examine passenger cars. The correct answer is B. Yes, and can also place you out of service. Federal inspectors have the authority to inspect trucks and buses, and if they identify significant safety violations, they can place the vehicle out of service indicating that it is prohibited from further operation until the violations are rectified. Question 15. How can you determine the appropriate time to shift gears? A. Vehicle weight, outside temperature. B. Tire pressure, radio volume. C. 
engine speed, road speed. D, wind direction, fuel level. The correct answer is C, engine speed, road speed. Shifting gears can be determined based on engine speed, RPM, and road speed, vehicle velocity. Monitoring these factors helps ensure smooth gear changes and optimal engine performance while driving. Question 16. All except one must be completed for a CDL with HAZMAT endorsement to be renewed. A. Pass the HAZMAT recertification knowledge test. B. Complete a state security threat assessment application. C. Pay fingerprint check. D. Submit a renewal application. The correct answer is B. Complete a state security threat assessment application. A federal, not state. Security threat assessment application must be completed. Drivers must pass a written test about the regulations and requirements and a federal threat assessment application to receive clearance from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and the Transportation Security Administration. Question 17. What is a smooth bore tank? A. Tankers with smooth manhole covers for easy access. B. Baffled tanks that have smooth openings for easier cleaning. C. Tankers that are smooth on the outside. D. An unbaffled liquid tanker. The correct answer is D. An unbaffled liquid tanker. Another name for smooth bore tank is unbaffled tank. This means that there is nothing inside the tank, such as bulkheads or baffles, to slow down the movement of liquid. Surges in these tanks can be extremely strong. Question 18. In a traffic emergency, where collision avoidance is crucial, which statement holds true? A. Always apply the brakes immediately. B. You can almost always turn to miss an obstacle more quickly than you can stop. C. You should come to a complete stop. D. Swerving is never a safe option. The correct answer is B. You can almost always turn to miss an obstacle more quickly than you can stop. When facing a potential collision, the ability to swiftly turn and steer to avoid an obstacle can often lead to quicker and safer outcomes compared to relying solely on braking to come to a stop. Question 19. In what scenario might adhering to the legal maximum weight not guarantee safety? A. Urban driving. B. Highway cruising. C. Short distance trips. D. Mountain traveling. The correct answer is D, mountain traveling. Mountain traveling can present steep grades and challenging terrain, which may compromise the safe handling and braking capability of a heavily loaded vehicle, even if it is within legal weight limits. It is essential to consider the specific conditions of the road and environment to ensure safe transportation. Question 20. When another vehicle is following closely behind you, what action should you take to enhance safety? A. Decrease your speed gradually. B. Maintain your current speed. C. Increase the space in front of your vehicle. D. Flash your brake lights to signal the driver behind you. The correct answer is C. Increase the space in front of your vehicle. If you are being tailgated, it is advisable to increase the space between your vehicle and the one ahead of you. This gives you more time to react and helps prevent potential rear-end collisions. Question 21. What are some components you should inspect at the front of your vehicle during a walk-around inspection? A. Cup holders, radio controls. B. Signal and clearance lights, headlights. C windshield wipers, air conditioning vents. D, seat adjustment levers, rear view mirror tilt. The correct answer is B, signal and clearance lights, headlights. During a walk around inspection, it's important to check the signal and clearance lights as well as the headlights on the front of your vehicle. These components are crucial for visibility and communication with other drivers ensuring safe operation on the road. Question 22. What is the recommended braking technique for descending a lengthy, steep slope? A. Apply brakes continuously to maintain constant speed. 
B. Apply brakes to 5 miles per hour below safe speed. Release and repeat. C. Apply brakes suddenly to prevent overheating. D. Only use engine braking to slow down. The correct answer is B. Apply brakes to 5 miles per hour below safe speed. Release and repeat. The appropriate technique when descending a long, steep grade is to intermittently apply the brakes to reduce your speed to 5 miles per hour below the safe speed for the descent, then release the brakes. Repeating this process helps prevent brake overheating and maintains control over the vehicle's speed while ensuring safer downhill travel. Question 23. What are the primary factors you should focus on when observing the road ahead? A. Weather forecast. GPS directions. B. Traffic and road conditions. C. Local attractions. Billboard advertisements. D. Vehicle interior. Rearview mirror. The correct answer is B. Traffic and road conditions. While driving, it's essential to pay attention to both traffic patterns and the condition of the road ahead. Monitoring these factors helps you anticipate potential obstacles, adjust your driving speed, and make safe decisions on the road. Question 24. What mirrors are used to see students walking in front of the bus? A. Passenger rear view. B. Crossover. C. Convex. D. Flat. The correct answer is B. Crossover. Crossover mirrors are mounted at the right and left front fenders. When the crossover mirrors are adjusted properly, the driver should see directly in front of the bus, the front of the right and left front tires, and the area from the front bumper to the rear axle and 12 feet perpendicular to the side of the bus. Question 25. What is the recommended number of reflective triangles that you should have in your vehicle? A. 3. B, 2, C, 1, D, 4. The correct answer is A, 3. It is advised to carry at least three reflective triangles in your vehicle. These triangles serve as warning devices and should be placed behind your vehicle in the event of a breakdown or emergency, helping to alert other drivers and promote safety on the road. Question 26. What is the minimal requirement for the number of tie-downs for a 20-foot load? A. At least one tie-down for every 10 feet. B. Four tie-downs. C. Two tie-downs. D. Only one tie-down. The correct answer is A. At least one tie-down for every 10 feet. For a 20-foot load, a minimum of two tie-downs is required as per the standard of having at least one tie-down for every 10 feet of the cargo length. This helps ensure proper load securement and safe transportation. Question 27. What benefit is associated with choosing to maneuver around an obstacle by going to the right rather than the left? A. It's a shorter route. B. You will avoid drivers passing on the left. C. You can use your dominant hand for steering. D. It's the conventional way to maneuver around obstacles. The correct answer is... B. You will avoid drivers passing on the left. Opting to go to the right around an obstacle provides the advantage of avoiding potential collisions with drivers who might be passing on the left. This reduces the risk of a dangerous situation and promotes safer maneuvering. Question 28. During a trip, what actions should you take to monitor your vehicle's condition? A. Admire the scenery. B. Listen to your favorite music. C. Watch gauges for signs of trouble. D. Text or make phone calls. The correct answer is C. Watch gauges for signs of trouble. While on a trip, it's important to stay vigilant about your vehicle's well-being. Monitoring gauges for signs of trouble allows you to detect any abnormalities early, helping to prevent potential mechanical issues and ensuring a safe journey. Question 29. Is it advisable to approach the fire as closely as you can when using an extinguisher? A. Yes. B. No. C. Only if the fire is small. D. Only if you have protective gear. The correct answer is B. 
No. No. You should not get as close as possible to the fire when using an extinguisher. Maintaining a safe distance is crucial to avoid putting yourself in harm's way and to effectively control the fire from a secure position. Question 30. What is the required minimum tread depth for the front tires of a vehicle? A. 4 30 seconds inch. B. 1 quarter inch. C. 1 16th inch. D. 1 8th inch. The correct answer is A. 4 30 seconds inch. The minimum tread depth for front tires should be at least 4 30 seconds inch. Adequate tread depth ensures proper traction and grip on the road, particularly during adverse weather conditions, reducing the risk of skidding and enhancing overall safety while driving. Question 31. After being forced to drive on the right shoulder to prevent a collision, what is the correct method to re-enter the pavement? A. Swiftly steer back onto the pavement while maintaining speed. B. Come to a complete stop, if possible, before steering back onto the pavement. C. Gradually steer back onto the pavement while maintaining the same speed. D. Accelerate and merge onto the pavement without stopping. The correct answer is B. Come to a complete stop, if possible, before steering back onto the pavement. To ensure safety, when returning to the pavement from the right shoulder, it is recommended to come to a complete stop, if possible, before steering back onto the roadway. Question 32. What precautions should a driver take when driving on black ice? A. Get off the road immediately. B. Drive slow. C. Keep a safe distance. D. Use safe braking techniques. The correct answer is A. Get off the road immediately. It is unsafe for any vehicle to drive on black ice. Driving a tanker is especially hazardous and should never be attempted. Question 33. What are the potential consequences of wet brakes? A. Improved stopping distance. B. Enhanced visibility. C. Reduced fuel consumption. D. Lack of braking power. The correct answer is D. Lack of braking power. Wet brakes can lead to a lack of braking power due to reduced friction between the brake components and the wet surface. This can result in longer stopping distances and compromised overall braking performance, posing a safety concern. Question 34. What is the primary purpose of having an assistant when backing a vehicle? A. To make the process faster. B. To provide entertainment for the driver. C. To take over the driving temporarily. D. To help avoid blind spots. The correct answer is D. To help avoid blind spots. Using a helper when backing is crucial to help avoid blind spots that might not be visible from the driver's seat. The assistant can provide additional viewpoints and guide the driver to prevent collisions and ensure safer and more accurate backing maneuvers. Question 35. Which of the following statements is accurate? A. Most accidents happen on sunny days. B. Accidents rarely occur during rush hour. C. Many accidents occur during weekends. D. Many accidents occur between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. The correct answer is D. Many accidents occur between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. This time period is associated with reduced visibility, fatigue, and potential impaired driving conditions, contributing to a higher incidence of accidents during these early morning hours. Question 36. How far away should placards be placed away from other markings on the vehicle? A. 5 inches B. 3 inches C. 1 foot D. 15 inches the correct answer is B, 3 inches. Drivers must make sure that placards are positioned on their vehicle 3 inches away from other markings. Some types of markings would include advertisements, company name, and more. Placards display important information and distractions away from these warnings need to be eliminated. Question 37. When it comes to emergency brakes, 
what is the crucial factor to bear in mind? A. Emergency brakes should be used as a substitute for regular brakes. B. Emergency brakes are only effective at high speeds. C. Emergency brakes provide better stopping power than regular brakes. D. If the wheels are skidding, you cannot control the vehicle. The correct answer is D. If the wheels are skidding, you cannot control the vehicle. The key takeaway about emergency brakes is that if the wheels are skidding, your ability to maintain control over the vehicle is greatly compromised, highlighting the importance of controlled braking techniques to avoid loss of control. Question 38. Is it accurate to say that empty trucks have the most effective braking performance? A. True. B. False. C. Sometimes. D. Only on uphill roads. The correct answer is B. False. The statement is false. Empty trucks actually have reduced traction compared to loaded trucks, which can affect braking performance. Loaded trucks often have better traction due to the increased weight over the wheels, leading to improved braking capabilities. Question 39. What does the term hydroplaning refer to in driving? A. Vehicle overheating on a hot day. B. Strong wind pushing the vehicle off course. C. A sudden increase in engine power. D. Tires losing contact with the road and having no traction. The correct answer is... D. Tires losing contact with the road and having no traction. Hydroplaning occurs when water accumulates on the road surface, causing a loss of traction between the tires and the road. This lack of contact can result in reduced control and handling, increasing the risk of accidents. Question 40. When driving at night, which guideline is recommended for ensuring safety? A. Keep your speed slow enough to stop within the range of your headlights. B. Rely solely on streetlights for visibility. C. Increase your speed to reach your destination faster. D. Drive with your high beams on at all times. The correct answer is A. Keep your speed slow enough to stop within the range of your headlights. To enhance safety while driving at night, it is advisable to maintain a speed that allows you to come to a complete stop within the distance illuminated by your headlights, helping to prevent collisions and ensure better reaction time. Question 41. Blank semi-trailers should always be in first position behind the tractor, and the black trailer should always be in the rear. A. Lightly loaded, heavier. B. Top heavy lower. C. Heavily loaded, lighter. D. Lower, top heavy. The correct answer is C. Heavily loaded, lighter. Heavier loads should always be in the first position behind the tractor in order to stabilize the load. If the weight is in the rear of the load, the vehicle cannot handle swinging movements and sideway forces. Question 42. What elements influence your decision in choosing a safe speed while descending a lengthy, steep slope? A. Weight of vehicle length of grade, steepness, road conditions, weather. B. Vehicles model, year, fuel type, tire brand, window tint, GPS device. C. Time of day, number of rest stops, passenger conversations, radio station. D. Billboard advertisements, road signs, Personal mood, recent maintenance, cabin temperature. The correct answer is A. Weight of vehicle, length of grade, steepness, road conditions, weather. The selection of a safe speed during a downhill descent is determined by factors such as the weight of the vehicle, the length and steepness of the grade, road conditions, and prevailing weather. These considerations collectively guide the driver to maintain control and ensure safety while navigating the descent. Question 43. What braking technique should be used when going down a steep downgrade? A. Same braking as normal. B. Snub braking. C. Stab braking. D. Engine braking. The correct answer is D. Engine braking. Engine braking is the process of taking the foot off of the accelerator while downshifting gears. There are many benefits to engine braking, such as safety, 
while downhill driving, improved fuel efficiency, and lower maintenance cost. Question 44. At what intervals are you required to stop and inspect your cargo while driving? A. Whenever you feel tired. B. Every three hours or 150 miles. C. Once a day. D. Only during adverse weather conditions. The correct answer is B. Every three hours or 150 miles. To ensure the safety and proper security of your cargo, it is mandatory to stop and inspect it every three hours or after covering 150 miles a distance of 150 miles. This practice helps identify any potential issues and prevent accidents caused by shifting or improperly secured cargo. Question 45. Which statement is accurate regarding tire pressure? A. Tire pressure remains constant regardless of temperature changes. B. The air pressure in the tire increases when the temperature rises. C. Tire pressure is unaffected by altitude variations. D. Tire pressure decreases when the temperature rises. The correct answer is B. The air pressure in the tire increases when the temperature rises. The air pressure within a tire tends to increase with rising temperatures. As the temperature goes up, the air molecules inside the tire move faster and exert more pressure, potentially leading to overinflated tires, which can impact handling and tire wear. Question 46. What is the primary motivation for performing a vehicle inspection? A. Safety is the most important reason to inspect your vehicle. B to impress your passengers, C, to enhance fuel efficiency, D, to save time on your journey. The correct answer is A. Safety is the most important reason to inspect your vehicle. Safety is the most vital reason for conducting a vehicle inspection. By thoroughly inspecting your vehicle, you can identify and address potential issues, ensuring that your vehicle is safe to operate on the road. This practice helps prevent accidents, ensuring the well-being of both the driver and others sharing the road. Question 47. Among the options, which statement is not accurate when backing to a dock? A. Align the trailer with the dock opening. B. Communicate with a spotter if available. C. Back slowly until you bump the dock. D. Turn the steering wheel in the opposite direction. The correct answer is C. Back slowly until you bump the dock. When backing to a dock, it is important to avoid forcefully bumping into the dock. Instead, aim for a controlled and precise alignment, utilizing careful steering and communication techniques. Question 48. A yellow lamp will light up on the dashboard when the blank is not working properly. A. Transmission. B. Service brake. C. Parking brake. D. Anti-lock brake system. The correct answer is D. Anti-lock brake system. Many commercial vehicles have an anti-lock brake system, ABS. The ABS uses sensors to monitor the wheel's rotation. If an abnormal rotation is detected, the ABS forces split second releases of brake pressure. Question 49. When halted on the shoulder of a divided highway, what action is required? A. Accelerate back onto the road quickly. B. Place reflective triangles or flares within 10 minutes of stopping. C. Park at least 100 feet from the shoulder. D. Turn off all vehicle lights for safety. The correct answer is B. Place reflective triangles or flares within 10 minutes of stopping. To enhance visibility and warn other drivers, it is essential to promptly place reflective triangles or flares behind your vehicle when stopped on the shoulder of a divided highway. This precautionary measure reduces the risk of collisions and ensures safety for both you and approaching motorists. Question 50. When parking, drivers need to be aware of how parking lots are arranged so they can blank when exiting a parking space. A. Pull straight through. B. Back up carefully. C. Pull around other vehicles. D. 
align with other vehicles? The correct answer is A. Pull straight through. When parking, drivers need to be aware of how parking lots are arranged and plan ahead. Drivers should avoid parking in an area that will prevent them from driving straight ahead and put them in a position where exiting will be a difficult maneuver. Question 51. Which statement accurately describes rear drive wheel braking skids? A. They primarily occur on dry roads. B. When pulling a trailer, the trailer can push the towing vehicle sideways. C. They are less likely when towing a trailer. D. They are only a concern for front-wheel drive vehicles. The correct answer is B. When pulling a trailer, the trailer can push the towing vehicle sideways. When braking the rear drive wheels on a vehicle while towing a trailer, the weight of the trailer can lead to a skid where the trailer pushes the towing vehicle sideways, making it vital to apply controlled braking and maintain stability during the stop. Question 52. What is the hazard of transporting liquid in a tank? A. The vehicle being pushed forward when stopping due to liquid surge. B. Leaks and spills. C. Fires explosions. D. All of the above. The correct answer is... D. All of the above. There are many dangers involved with driving tanker trucks. Many times, tanker trucks transport liquid cargo such as ethanol, gasoline, diesel, and more. These liquids are highly flammable and could be explosive in the event of an accident. Drivers must also be aware of their vehicle being pushed forward when stopping since the liquid will surge. Leaks and spills are also another risk factor. Question 53. Battery fluid is listed under what class of hazardous material? A. 1. B. 4. C. 8. D. 9. The correct answer is C. 8. Battery fluid is hazardous class 8 corrosives. The placard used for battery fluid is white and black with a picture of corrosive fluid on hand and pipe with the number code 2794. Battery fluid can cause eye damage, temporary loss of vision or blindness, skin irritation or burning. If inhaled, battery fluid can cause nose and throat irritation with coughing and shortness of breath. Question 54. What is a potential consequence of inadequate weight on the front axle? A. Improved steering response. B. Can cause poor traction. C. Enhanced tire longevity. D. Reduced fuel consumption. The correct answer is B. Can cause poor traction. Insufficient weight on the front axle can lead to poor traction, especially in slippery or adverse road conditions. Adequate weight on the front axle helps maintain control, improve steering grip, and ensure safe driving performance. Question 55. What does gross combination weight, G, V, W, refer to? A. Weight of power unit plus trailer, plus cargo. B. Weight of power unit, minus trailer, minus cargo. C. Weight of fuel in the vehicle. D. Weight of passengers in the vehicle. The correct answer is A. Weight of power unit, plus trailer, plus cargo. The gross combination weight, GVW, encompasses the total weight of the power unit, such as the truck, the attached trailer, and all the loaded cargo. This measurement is important for ensuring compliance with weight limits and promoting safe and balanced transportation. Question 56. Identify essential components of a vehicle's steering system. A. Rearview mirror, horn, seatbelt. B. Air conditioning, radio, headlights. C. Cup holder, glove compartment, windshield wipers. D. Spindle, tie rod, drag link. The correct answer is D. Spindle, tie rod, drag link. The spindle, tie rod, and drag link are critical components of a vehicle's steering system that work together to ensure controlled and precise steering. These parts play a crucial role in maintaining safe and effective control over the vehicle's direction and movement. Question 57. What potential issue can arise from brakes becoming wet when driving through a heavy rain? A. Wheel lockup. 
B. Improved fuel efficiency. C. Reduced tire wear. D. Enhanced braking performance. The correct answer is A. Wheel lockup. Wet brakes might lead to decreased friction between brake components and the possibility of wheel lockup. This occurs when the wheels stop rotating during braking, resulting in compromised control and increased stopping distance. Question 58. How would you define a hazard? A. A convenient parking spot. B. A scenic view. C. Any road condition or user that is a possible danger. D. An opportunity for a detour. The correct answer is C. Any road condition or user that is a possible danger. A hazard refers to any road condition or user, such as pedestrians, other vehicles or obstacles, that poses a potential danger to safe driving. Recognizing and responding to hazards is essential for proactive and defensive driving to prevent accidents. Question 59. What is the key reason for shifting gears correctly? A. To conserve fuel. B. To achieve higher speeds. C. To reduce engine noise. D. To help maintain control of the vehicle. The correct answer is D. To help maintain control of the vehicle. Proper gear shifting is essential to ensure smooth acceleration, deceleration, and optimal engine performance. Helping the driver maintain control over the vehicle and promoting safe and efficient driving practices. Question 60. Is it advisable to apply the brakes forcefully when a tire blows out? A. True. B. False. C. Sometimes. D. Only on wet roads. The correct answer is B. False. The statement is false. If a tire blows out, abruptly applying the brakes can lead to loss of control and potentially cause a skid or spin. Instead, it's recommended to gradually reduce speed and maintain control of the vehicle while safely pulling over to the side of the road. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you still need more practice, then check out these videos or click the first link in the description to get your cheat sheet, which will help you pass your CDL exam on your first try.